Oh, praise the Lord. Um, um, I hope I'm clear that side. I can hear you, Pastor Sam. All right. But That's a little good. bit louder. All uh, right. Um, yes. I'm actually Amen. at uh, I'm a station trying to connect to Mombasa this morning. I, I think I initially had thought that I will be on uh, to, today. We were supposed to be in Mombasa, so uh, but our travel uh, arrangements changed. But I want to thank God that I'm still here. I want to begin by thanking God for all of Amen. you, especially for my friend and my brother, uh, uh, Reverend Jeff, who has uh, always brought me from the village to the church here in Kampala. And um, what a joy indeed to participate and, and be part of what God is doing this week as we look at, um, you know, the, the, the season of revival, revival for church growth, revival uh, that helps us to be the people that God wants us to be. And uh, I've been asked to specifically talk about um, the significance of prayer uh, in revival. Of course, I need to first of all begin by, you know, kind of briefly uh, um, defining when we talk about revival, it means uh, giving life to something that is stale, giving life to something that is dead, giving life to something that is discouraged, that is disempowered, and, um, and, and basically so that we may grow, you know, have life again. And when we talk about significance, we are talking about something that is so important that without it, you will not have the intended results. So the significance of prayer, and of course, prayer becomes uh, simply defined as communing with God. For a long time, I used to think that prayer is me talking to God uh, so that God can give me what I want. But later I learned that actually prayer is me engaging with God so that God can accomplish greater things he has in store or in mind for mankind and for all of us. And so, uh, and I'm even glad that actually I was given a specific uh, text to look at. But before we go to the specific verses, that is uh, Acts chapter 4, uh, from verse 20, uh, that will be 23, I believe it is. Uh, I just wanted us to get the context of this whole story. Um, the story begins by Jesus coming and beginning to say very strange things about how he was the Christ, he was promised. Obviously, people had expected he would come in a big way. Uh, people had expected that when he shows up, the order of things would People had expected that the power that they, they had always wished for would be be manifested, people had thought that the kingdom of Israel would be established. And of course, they expected, I'm sure, that he would be born in a great big family. Now, to their biggest shock and surprise, the guy who shows up, who acts actually like a fraud, fraudster, he says that he's a Christ, born in a poor family, born under yeah, strange circumstances, you know? And, and, and so he's beginning to tell us that he is the Christ. And so he's, he's around, okay, he does a few miracles here and there. Uh, some of them are really amazing. And, um, but anyway, I've already had some, you know, people who have done things like that, you know. So, of course, obviously, some of them were totally and completely off, like unbelievable miracles that happened. And of course, they, they succeeded in killing him. Now, the amazing thing that really, really surprises us is that Jesus, who had come to start the church, actually he left before that church was established. He left here 12 guys, roughly trained, not, not in a college situation. Not, uh, and and, and the, the choice of the people he picked with was just the really problem that confuses. Why would he only pick these uh, uneducated guys, guys who are not well-educated? Why would he pick that? And, but that's what he picked. And then he, he stayed with them, the Bible said for, or Bible scholar said it was about three and a half years. He was with them. And, and then of course, he goes back and Jesus leaves us here. And as he goes, he tells them, don't leave the upper room until you receive power 
For after you receive the power, then you shall become my witnesses. And we, of course, we saw that. And then so on that day, he lifts them up, he goes away. And instead of staying up, they went out. Um, and well, they were out there. No, uh, no. They cut no fish again. He comes and helps them uh, to cut this fish. He tells them, guys, I told you to wait in the upper room. What are you doing out there looking for fish? So they go back in the upper room. And of course, we all know the story, how the power came down and 3,000 were added to the number. And this, this was amazing. And, and because of what had just happened, you know, Jesus continues, uh, you know, teaching. And, and then, of course, the, the disciples begin to put into practice what he had said. And the Bible says, we going to this temple. And, you know, uh, there's this guy who was seated there. Surprisingly, Jesus left that guy because the Bible says he used to sit at the temple. Beautiful. And which means actually Jesus even left him there. And so he's seated there and he's left there. But then we, we, we realize that the Peter and, and John come and then the man confronts them and says, hey guys, you used to work with Jesus. You must be good people. I need some arms. And the Bible says, when they check themselves, because they must have checked, that's why Peter said, silver and gold we don't have, but such as we have, we give to you. And, um, and then of course, we you know the story. So they tell the man to rise up and the man will refuse to rise up, and, and then, of course, the, the command, he refuses, and according to the scripture, they took him by their hands to lift him up. Why are they doing this? Because they believe that what Jesus has told them is going to come to pass, and so they lift the man up, and the Bible says he begins to get strong, and the man runs up and jumping and rejoicing, and that brings trouble, and so we come here to find out, as they spoke to the people, the priest and the captain of the temple, and the seducers came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they told the people and teached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word lived, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Talk of church growth from three, from actually 12 miserable guys who were in the upper room, we have now jumped to 3,000. And in a few weeks, we have jumped on to 5,000 people. I think this is what we are talking about. Now, now this, the amazing thing is that after they arrested them, verse 5, and it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, all that described, rulers, and, 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 and us, uh, high priest, uh, high priest, John and Alexander, and so many as they were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power? Oh, by what name have you done this? This is interesting. So look at what they're talking about. They're saying, look, the thing that will bring a revival is a power that is not usual because this opens the eyes of the people. The other thing that will uh, bring revival is the authority because they're asking in whose name, in what name have you done this and by what power? Those two things, if they are lacking in the church, we cannot have revival. And if we are lacking in the church, we cannot have church growth. And then the Bible says that Peter filled with the Holy Spirit, the other part that we must be filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good thing, than to help this man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you hold. Now that's amazing. That's amazing because listen to what the Bible is telling us here. So look, we, when we ask of the power, we want you to know that the power we are using is the power of Jesus Christ. And he says something that is very important that we are going to be talking about revival. He says that the power of Jesus does good things for helpless man. It does good things for helpless man. So, which means that if we're going to have revival, we are going to need to see helpless people getting help from the Lord. Now, and I like what he says. He says, look, the thing that you have seen here is of the same Jesus, the one you crucified, saying he was a fraud, the one you crucified, saying he was a, he was a liar. And, and, and the Bible says, as we continue down, says this is no other 
as a as a name given under heaven, among the men by which we must be saved. What is he saying? He's saying that when we bring about revival, when we bring about salvation and the revival that brings church growth, it must be bound up in a name and in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I like the next part because the reason why I'm giving this background because it helps us to know what kind of people will bring revival when they pray. Now, verse 13 says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. This is interesting. You see, one of the things that really bothered me for a long time is that I always was looking for formulas. I would look for uh, the seven steps to church growth. I would look for, uh, you know, the, the secrets to church growth. And, and then one time I was just shocked to discover that the thing that really makes a difference is not that people are educated, it's not that people are trained as such, it's not that people are complicated, but that people have been with Jesus. Because, you know, I discovered something that many times, and, I, and I've done this, I've done ministry for, I've been a pastor since 1994, and, and I discovered something just last year when I had three encounters. The first encounter um, that really surprised me. And I think one time when I was sharing here, I talked about it. My first encounter with God, uh, God challenged me uh, to check myself, the person I am, uh, the motives of why I do the ministry. The second part, it, it challenged me about my faith. And the third part, it challenged me about my preparation for when he comes back. You know, last year I had three. One was in Feb, one was in August, and, and I don't have time to go into the details. But one of the things that really, really surprised me is that actually Jesus is not even interested in our programs, the things we do. I run a very tight shift. I run a very tight shift. I do so much. God was telling me that even if you do what I've told you to do, I'm interested in the motive. I'm interested in the motive why you are doing the things you are doing. And, and then I also realized that actually is in so much, not so much into the, uh, the, 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 the structure of our programs, but in so much into uh, the obedience of the people who are praying. Uh, because when he told them, go wait, when you wait, I'll come. And when I come, I'll do what I'm supposed to do. And Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I draw all men to myself. And, and I like that when they looked at them, they saw those three things, I'm trained, um, there's no common people who had been with Jesus, the Bible says, and when they saw the man who was healed and standing with them, they could say nothing against us. But when they had commanded them to go aside to the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to this man? For indeed, that a notable miracle has been done through them, it's evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. And this is the thing when revival has come. The things God has done cannot be explained. They will be clear. People will see them. Uh, people are going to understand what God has done. People will see that the former liars, the former cheats, the former corrupt have changed and have turned what they took. And, and this suddenly uh, takes a turn uh, for everything. So now, so we, we've seen the background. And then I like after they have told them that you cannot talk through this name again. They assure them and say, we cannot keep quiet. We will talk in this name. We are going to make sure we talk in this name. We cannot keep quiet of the things we have seen, the things that we have, you know, uh, touched. And let, me, let me just read it so that, for we cannot but keep, uh, uh, but speak the things that was 20, which you have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people since they all glorified God for what had been done. Well, that's another point. It's very, very important for any revival to make a difference, for any prayer to make a difference. We must be that it's all about glorifying God. And, and, and the thing that we have lost as a church is the fear of God, which actually reveals the glory of God. We are so much into our things. We are so much into our programs. And, and, and you know, sometimes, some of those things can come and, and cover us and confuse us. So verse 23, he says, and being let go, this is, this is where prayer now shows that how powerful it is. Being let go, 
uh, they went to their own companions and reported all that the high priest, the chief priest, and elders had said to them. You know, they, they because of what they had gone through, this was actually they survived death by a whisker. And so they go back to their people. So when they had that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Who by the mouth of your servant David had said, Why did the nation trade and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth uh, took their stand. And the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against Christ. So truly, I bless you, Holy Servant Jesus, whom you anointed both, um, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hands to heal and, 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 the, and the signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. This is important because one of the things that happened to me when I went to Masaka, I'd come from KPC, Kapala Pentecostal Church at that time, which is Watoto Church. It was a big church, vibrant church. When I went out there, I had this big plan to see God do things in big ways, signs and wonders. You know, the thing that really shocked me is that even when we had so many signs and wonders at the beginning, things were not working. Uh, people were not coming to church, church was not growing. So I went back to God and said, but what is the problem? And God said, this is my work. Lift me up. Let the people know I am God. Introduce me to the people. Teach the people to come to me. Let people have the boldness and confidence to come to me because I love my people. I want to heal my people. I want to touch my people. I want to change my people. And that actually changed how I do ministry because in the beginning, I wanted to pray for people so that I can reveal that I'm anointed of God. And I discovered actually God was more interested in having his people empowered so that they are strong in him. Having these people empowered so that even when I'm not there, they will be doing you know, doing the things God requires of them. And so, one of the things that I want to beg of us, even as we're in this season of late, may God help us that we realize it's not about us. It's about him. It's about us allowing him to be God. It's about us allowing his name to be glorified. And, and I like how they pray. They said, oh, sovereign God, oh, sovereign God. You, you like you, God, you are the beginning and the end. You are the, the, you are the in charge of what you are doing. And one of the things that I think sometimes as a church we fail is to remember the sovereignty of God. Uh, like, like, you know, when you know that God is sovereign, when you know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine, when you know that there is nothing that can leave God, you, you begin to see God doing amazing things. Like since last year, when I had those encounters with God, I started saying, God, what do you want to do? God gave me a vision. He said, this, if you believe me, and if you do what I tell you to do, there's going to be such a great revival. And then God started giving me visions, big visions, like the kinds that, hey, if you told me last year about one, that before I had my encounter with God, I'll tell you, you're out of your mind. And, and God was telling me, I have the power and the capacity to change this country in just under five years. I can change this country. I can make myself known as God. I can go to every household and reveal myself. And, and the thing that really got me, and this is what I want to ask us, is would we as the people of God, each one of us on our own, go back to God and say, God, if you do anything, would you work with a person like me? And then ask God, God, is there something that may hinder you from working through me? Because I discovered this, that God is God, God is a sovereign God, number one, but also God is a, a, is a faithful God. He's faithful to his word. And so if God has said to the pure, I'll show myself pure. Uh, to those who believe, I'll show myself a faithful God who answers prayer. And if you are not what they are saying, he will. God will not bend his law for us. And so, as you can see the disciples, what made a difference for them 
is when they were threatened, they went back to God and they said, you are all sovereign God. You are the one who has done this. We want to have the boldness to continue speaking. We want to have the boldness to continue believing you to see signs and wonders. We want to have the boldness. And, and I've discovered this, that sometimes when we step out there in boldness, it, it, it is scary. I will never forget that much. I've been uh, 2009. Uh, I, I got a phone call from Nairobi, the uh, church uh, Christ the Answer Ministry, which is the NPC, it's the Watoto version of, of Kenya. And um, I, I got a call. They said, the Man of God, we have had, uh, you know, God has worked through you. The area of HIV, our church has been responding to HIV. And, but people have started writing, you know, you know, those. Uh, um, information box in, that we have had what men talk about HIV. What does God say? And we want you to come and be a blessing to our church here. And so, and, and that prior to that, God had told me He wanted to use me in the area of cancer and HIV because I have a background um, in, in both of them one directly to me, one uh, to my mom's and my, my wife's mom. So, so I, I, you know, I went to that place. With fear and trembling, because you know, when God told me I was going to use me for cancer, all the people I prayed for, the past six people I prayed for, died under six months. Even those whose cancer had just been seen, uh, I think they called them stage one, they would die within six months. So I feared. And then I was called, my mom called me in the village. She said, uh, They've checked me and I have cancer of the breast and I want you to pray for me because she said, God is a healer. And so I pray for mom and she goes back and they check, the lamp is gone. They do an autopsy, clear, clean, nothing. And then at that time, and this is this is after the six people have died. Then uh, my wife calls me and says, you need to come because my mom wanted to pray for her. And the stepmom of my wife is one of the people who died when they died. And, and, and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want this. <laughs> but because I just prayed for my mom, I just healed. I didn't want to bring trouble in my home that I refused to pray for my wife's mom. So I go. And as we pray for her, Guess what? She woke up the next morning, the lamp was gone. She goes back to the same clinic where she had done the past. She told us she had cancer of the breast. We check again and they say, You don't have cancer of the breast. And, and so, because of that boldness, I told those people that, Yes, I'll come. And, and I want only those who have tested, those who have proved that it has been positive. Obviously, you know, when you stand up and say such things, sometimes you say them in excitement, but now when you have a whole church full of people like that, people who are on oxygen, people who have been brought, you know, from yeah, stage four plus. I mean, it was a scary situation. But then I quickly remember, this is not me, it's about God. If I will lift him up, God will show himself strong. And I remember that day we prayed and the miracles that happened in that place were so overwhelming. Uh, they, they, you know, they, they, the church has a, a radio, so people are reporting on radio. And then family TV of, of Nairobi came, they interviewed me for a whole hour. And two days later, KTN, KCB, all of them came. They also wanted to interview me and the Lord told me, don't you do anything like that. Um, I want my glory. So I told them, go find the people who claim to have been here, interview them. Because me, I'll tell you that I believe God who heals and God heal the people. And, and from that day, I have seen so many people healed. But one of the things I realized, and, and this is what the Lord was speaking, he said many times when God begins to use us in power to bring the revival, we tend to take the flight from God and we put it on ourselves so that people will look at us as the anointed of God. People will look at us as the mighty men and women of God. But I'm praying today, as we go into prayer, as we, we go to God, I want us to go into faith knowing that whatever we pray, God is faithful and we answer prayer. I want us to go there knowing that our God is able to do it. You know, the Bible says in James, he says, you have not because you ask not. And you ask and not have because you ask wrongly. And, and, and since I started going back to God, knowing he's sovereign, knowing he owns the silver and the gold, some of the doors that are opening are shocking and amazing. And, and some of them, you know, like now I'm traveling to Mombasa. It's it just amazing that somebody had uh, one of the, the ministries who had done he said, what can we do to have that gentleman here? And, and they just mobilized people in Kenya and, and Uganda, and, and they, you know, and we're all going there. It's just amazing, even just from yesterday, what God has done. 
uh, before even we reach the master itself. And so what am I saying in brief? I'm saying, people, we need to pray. But our prayer must be God-centered. It must be a prayer that brings glory to God. Why do we need to have our church to grow? Not so that we have the biggest church in Kampala, but it needs to be so that God is glorified in the biggest way in Kampala through our fellowship and through our ministry. Why should we have signs and wonders? Not so that people know that even as God is working with us, but so that people will know the God of the Bible is still a living God and is still working. And good people, let me tell you something I learned. I learned this and I was shocked when the first time I learned it. You know, in Mark chapter 10, verse 8, he talks about that and he sent out the 72, you know, and he told them, go, heal the sick, go. But let me read that scripture. You know, it, it, it's just one of those very powerful scriptures that the first time I read it, it just shocked me. Say, go heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely you uh, freely give. Now, the thing about this, this scripture, which is so powerful, he taught me something. He, he says that he's given us the power to go and heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. You know, the child sometimes, if it has done anything, it has demons. But, but the healing, the Bible says, we're freely given and we freely have received this, which means all of us who are children of God, who are believing in God, we have the power to heal, the power to cleanse the labor, the power to raise the dead, and to cast out demons. Now, the funny thing is that there will be many, very, very many people under the sound of my voice, even right now, who have actually never, ever tried to raise the dead. But it's in the Bible. That's why he says, you will go the dead, the sick. So, which means that when they refuse to get healed, they, it's not over. There's also raising them. As I talked this morning, we have had directly the two people who have been raised from the dead in our ministry, and I'll keep hearing testimony. Well, Pastor, I don't think of yours work. We tried it. There was this child that had been knocked by the car, and we took them to the clinic. There was no pulse. The foot was dead, and we prayed, and the child came back to life. The thing that, especially about that child who came back to life, is that when they came back to life, even the broken bones had been made whole. Now, this, this, these were young people who had what I shared, and they ran with it because they believe when we call upon God, God hears and he answers. What am I saying? Good people, we need to go back and pray, not just for God to provide for us, not just for God you know, to give us things, but we need to be more concentrated on prayer that brings glory and honor to God, so that God himself will reveal himself. He will draw men to himself. If we lift him up as we pray, if we lift him up and not limit him with our, our own resources and our smallness, God is actually going to surprise us as he does more than we have ever imagined. I want to, I think, stop here right now and, and just hear from me if you heard me. And uh, I pray that the Lord will actually challenge us to begin praying. And, and good people, I'm not talking about this prayer, uh, the complex, complicated prayer of 72 hours of prayer and fasting. I'm talking about everyone of us on a daily. You know, they ask Jesus to teach us how to pray. So this is how we used to pray. Our Father was in heaven. It begins with that relationship. Allah be their name, raising up the name of the Lord. And then he says, give us today, this day, our daily bread. Meaning like as much as we eat every day, he expects us to pray every day. And this prayer is without ceasing. And as we begin to pray, the prayer is that fire, that firewood that sets our, you know, things of God on fire. It's that fuel that makes the car of the things of God work. And, and I'm telling you some of the things that the Lord has just started doing since I got this new revelation, that prayer, this daily prayer, this consistent prayer, this prayer that as we walk, we pray, this prayer as we encounter challenges, we pray, you know, this prayer that as we, we keep calling upon the name of the Lord, it shows through, you know, yesterday we were driving and we kept hearing a car had making funny sounds. And, and I said, God, what is going on? He said, you go check the car. We go there. Four boats were out, we were only moving on one, you know, driving to Nairobi. And, and you know, like, I think that is a miracle. The people who were with you were like, wow, how did you know it was that? that? So, well, I prayed as you had, and that's how God revealed it to us. May God bless you. I thank you so much for the opportunity for me uh, to come and share with us, uh, to say that, hey, we need to put prayer where it belongs, and we need to pray knowing that God will show and surprise us. We'll do great and mighty things 
more than you have ever thought or imagined. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Allen, are you back? Amen. Amen. Uh, yes, I am yeah. back. Amen. But, but Joy, could you respond? And I also respond partially because I missed the first part. All right. All right. Thank you yeah, so much. Do half, then I'll do half. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, our dear Pastor Mukabi. You, you are a blessing to us. And we bless the Lord for you refreshing us. Let us receive the word in prayer. Our Father and our God, we receive this word because it has come in timely in this season, my God and my King. We receive this word and we want to pray, Lord, that you propel us to pray in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we want to pray a blessing upon. Pastor Mukabi, may you continue to refresh him. May you continue to be the, the light of his salvation. Lord, bless the work of his hands. Bless his family as he travels to Mombasa this morning. Holy Spirit, may you go ahead of him. We pray that he'll continue to speak your word in boldness, Lord, and the fear of the Holy Spirit upon him all the days of his life. We bless you and we give you thanks, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. Amen. Back to the word. He, he refreshed us this morning that revival is about giving life to, to something that has gone uh, stale or, or dead. This morning we want to pray that God will revive our prayer life because revival is all about God's name being exalted. It's about honoring God. It's about praising God on this planet. This morning, Heavenly Father, we ask you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ, to revive us, Lord. Revive us in the power of your Holy Spirit. Teach us to pray like the disciples said. They asked you that you teach them to pray. King of creation, we ask that you teach us to pray. Revive our prayer walk. Revive our, our spiritual lives. Revive, oh God, every dry bone in our lives, in our family, in our church, in the nation in our individual lives, Lord. In this season, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that we'll pray. We'll pray without ceasing. Your word tells us that a prayer of a righteous man availeth much. King of glory, we want to pray for that will be serious. That will be serious when it comes to prayer. Prayer is not a joking matter. King of glory, Teach us to pray. Help us, God, overcome our prayerlessness. Help us to pray like never before. May we spend time in prayer, seeking your face, that the church may be revived, oh God, through prayer. We want to pray against every spirit that attacks prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Have mercy upon us, Lord, where we do not pray. We are still sleeping like you found the disciples asleep and you ask them, you're still sleeping. Father, may we pray. Rise us to pray, day and night to pray. What we see around our nation, Lord, you tell us, what do we do when the, the, the nations are shaken? The foundations are not right. May we pray. May we pray, Lord, you're looking for someone to stand in the gap. The church is calling us to, to attend prayer meetings. May we turn up for prayer. King of glory, help us to pray. Revive us to pray. Help us to know that prayer is communing with you. Help us, Lord, to hear your voice through your word. Lord, how can we pray when we are clogged with sin? We ask you to, uh, to, to unclog us, King of glory, that we may pray. May we pray 
the speaker reminded us that we, in, in order for us to make a difference, we must be obedient to the word of God. In order for us to, be, to make a difference, we can't keep quiet. He reminded us that there must be fear of God. Father, we've taken you for granted. We no longer pray as we ought to. We are blocked vessels to some extent. King of all creation, help us this morning. Turn us back to you. We render, Lord, our garments. We render our hearts to you this morning that you may cleanse us, Lord, that you may be able to speak to us like you spoke to the prophets. Sometimes we do not hear because sin has separated us from you. We've gone wayward. Help us, King of glory, revive us in this season. We want to pray, oh God, teach us to pray. Teach us not to pray for ourselves, but to focus our attention on the church, to pray for our nation, to pray for others, especially the body of Christ. Father, we pray that you transform everyone, that, Lord, we will hear your voice and pray. King of glory, may we pray for one another. King of glory, in this season of prayer and fasting, God, help us, Father, to pray. Help us to practice the spiritual discipline. King of glory, we pray that you forgive us where we've oppressed others. Forgive us, Lord, where we've slandered. Forgive us, Lord, where we've run away from our relatives, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, where we've not fed the hungry. Through prayer, Lord, take us back to the drawing board. Help us in this, oh God, to offload our burdens to you, to care for one another, the sick, the hopeless, the, those in prisons. Father, we pray that you give us boldness. The speaker, Lord, reminded us to be bold, to share your gospel, to draw souls for you. King of glory, give us boldness. He also reminded us about the spirit of unbelief. He reminded us that sometimes we limit you. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Will you deal with our unbelief? Will you forgive us, Lord, where we, we limit you, King of glory? Have mercy this morning. We continue to, to ask you, dear Lord, that in this season, O oh God of prayer and fasting, that you'll grant us transformed lives, that you'll change our lives, re renew our minds, renew us, Lord. Give us your discipline. Empower us, Lord. Empower us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Revive the church, Lord. Revive the church and deal with the divisions in the church. Deal with the enemy against prayer in the church. Make us one. He reminded us that the, the disciples, they continued to meet to pray. May we meet to pray. May we meet brethren to pray. When the leaders call us to pray, can we pray? Can we meet? Can we get off food and seek the face of God? King of glory, we surrender to you this morning. We ask that you have your way. We ask that you revive us, Lord. Guide us. Use us, send us, that we may be disciples to others out there. The world needs you, Lord. Our neighbors need you. Our people in the village need that, Lord, we disciple them. The cathedral, there are so many that need us to, us to disciple them, to pray with them. They are hurting. King of glory, open our hearts this morning. Speak to each one of us on call that we may bring revival, Lord. People to pray, people to seek you, people to turn away from sin and seek your face. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed, amen. Over to you, Sister Allen. Thank you, Joy. As we close out, we I just um, 
picked out from past the issues of giving back God the glory. And as uh, Joy has tackled the issue, of, sometimes they tell us raise our voices and then we don't raise our voices. Let's ask God in this season that we shall be together in one accord. We shall come in boldness, even the smallest of us. Ask God for the Holy Spirit, in feeling of the Holy Spirit. That's what I, and then you will say you are not able to perform a miracle, but you will pray for somebody and they will get healed when you're alone or when you stand, stand in the, in the faith, in the faith, just like uh, Peter and John did. And uh, let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you. Thank you for your servant, uh, Samuel. Thank you, Lord, for joy. Thank you for everyone who has logged in. Lord, some of us have logged with discouragement. Some of us have said we have prayed, but we have not seen a miracle happen. Lord, there are all miracles around us. Lord, you intervene in ways that we sometimes cannot even fathom. But Lord, when the rulers of this world gather, Lord, when the children of Satan gather, Lord, help us this season that we shall be able to get over and above any temptation, any adversary, anything that comes amidst your children, their families, their loved ones. Oh, Lord, our God, this morning, we ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to fall upon us. Lord, it's difficult to fast. Lord, revival means we were once very alive, just like in the medical sector. When they resuscitate somebody, some, that means we are dying. Lord, let the dying nature of prayer be revived in me, be revived in my brothers. Lord, where we have had attacks, revive us to fight gallantly. Like when they baptize us, they say we fight sin and the devil. Lord, help us to, to, to fight gallantly against the devil and sin. And Lord, when we are tempted, Lord, bring us back to revival, to their first lane. Help us, Lord, not to consider the, con consider threats of Herod, the Goliaths, the Pharaohs, my God and my Father. Anoint your children, anoint us, O oh Lord, that we may speak in boldness with one accord. And Lord, that when we pray and the sick are healed, when we pray and people get breakthrough, we shall not take the glory. Lord, take the glory, take the honor. And this morning as we go to work, O oh Lord, as we go to do businesses, as we go to pray, those who are going to Mikono for mission, those who are even going to do mission and ministry at their workplace, even where they have given them uh, audience. Lord, we are all on a mission ground. We pray that, Lord, we shall speak with boldness like Peter and John, and we will help us, help us to deal with sin. Lord, help us to deal with sin aggressively that we shall not compromise, we shall not massage sin, but we shall pray and call on the name of the Lord because you are our Father, because you are the one who helps us. Without you, we cannot be of any use. Holy Spirit, come and dwell among us. Thank you, our God and our Father. And Lord, we ask that, Lord, as your children go, empower them, empower them, oh Lord. Lord, there are threats out there but Lord, we know that those threats will not work because you only allow only what you have allowed, allowed and what is destined. Now, Lord, as we close this meeting, bless us and honor and that we shall bring glory and honor to you. We thank you for every one of these, your children. Lord, may it be a very, very joyous day to them that you are Lord, who is our God, may be worshipped. In Jesus' name, I pray.